Hey there. I just want to say before I start this video, um, I just want to say thank you guys so much for the support on the last video. Uh, last video, we had so much support on it. Thank you guys so much, and thank you to all the new subscribers that have joined uh, the channel. Um, this is pretty much what I'm going to be doing, just Big Brother Survivor videos, whatever I can, because um, it's it's you know very interesting to see how I think of things, how you think of things, how we can agree and different disagree on things, because at the end of the day, it's our opinions. So, today what I want to be talking about is basically a rumored cast reveal that has been going around. That's right, a rumored cast reveal. Uh, before yesterday, after yesterday, after I made the Nicole situation video, uh, a rumored cast reveal has been going around. Um, to be honest, I'm very shocked with some of the people that are not there, some people that are actually in there, and... I'm just shocked about, like, how... I thought there was going to be more winners, to be honest. I thought there was at least going to be four winners. Three male, two, f one female. And I knew the one female was going to be Nicole, and I knew one of the males was going to be Ian. Um, there's been a rumor that Josh might have gone coronavirus, and maybe that's why he's not on it, which makes sense. Um, but another reason is, you know, I thought also, like, Hayden was going to be on this cast. The other brigade members on the cast and Enzo, and Hayden's not on the cast, which is cra- cr Ugh, sorry. Which is crazy to me. Hayden not being on this cast was actually very shocking to me, despite all the rumors looking that he was 100% positive that he was going to be on it. Alright, but we're going to be talking about the rumored cast reveal. Um, as you saw probably from the four pictures I have in each corner... Those are some of the people that are going to be on the cast. I will say warning though, if you do not want to know the cast right away, I highly recommend to wait and I highly suggest to wait until I make the official cast reveal video because that's because that's when pretty much the whole entire cast is officially revealed and I'll be talking about it there. I also will be making a player rankings. So before the season starts, I'll be making a player rankings. How that works is say I have somebody like number five out of like 16 or something. I believe that person is going to get fifth place on that season. That's pretty much how I think it's going to go. So I'll be getting player rankings and then my winner pick will be revealed th during that player rankings video. But without further ado... Let's begin with the rumored cast reveal. And I'm going to start with the first female I saw and I noticed from the cast reveal. By the way, the pictures are going to be up here. Uh, Bailey Dayton from Big Brother Season 20. To be honest, I kind of was thinking about it. It is interesting, though, that, you know, her husband's not on this cast in Swaggy C, but, you know, it is what it is. I mean, Bailey, to me, it w it does make it interesting how she would do the season. Gonna have to see. Uh, she does have Tyler, who, I mean, they had a pretty huge confrontation during one house meeting during that season, so we're gonna have to see how that goes. Um, but it is gonna be interesting to see uh, how Bailey and Tyler are going to be with each other, um, considering everything that happened in their season. There's a lot of confrontation. That house meeting explosion was insane to me. But uh, Bailey being on this cast definitely going to be interesting. I definitely want to see who she would align with. As to be honest, there's a lot more old schoolers than I was expecting, which I'm actually super happy that there is because I want to see them play the new school game. But um, yeah, Bailey being on this cast definitely makes sense. I feel like. Uh, BB20 players, there was going to be a few of them here, so definitely makes sense why she's on the cast. Next from BB19 was Christmas. Christmas was uh, a part of an alliance with Paul and Josh. I thought both of them also were going to be on this cast, but Paul has released a statement yesterday saying that he won't be on this cast, and Josh might have... Uh, I don't know if it's true, but I, I heard that he might have coronavirus, so we're definitely going to have to be w ready for that, but hopefully he's feeling better, by the way, if he does. But Christmas here, I am I definitely want to know uh, how she's going to do this season because during her season, she had something on her leg. So we're going to have to see how she would do this season, though. I'm very interested to see how she would do. Um, I, I definitely think her strategy would be different than how it was in BB19. I feel like she definitely wants to try being more dominant of a figure this season and probably try getting all the new schoolers together, probably try to get some people that she can get to be an alliance with. Um, but we're just going to have to see how it goes because right now I could see Christmas probably being at the bottom at the house because 
the thing is, with this cast reveal, if Paul and Josh were in here, I thought it was going to be the same alliance that they had in BB-19 with her, Paul, and Josh. Now, you know, Christmas, she's not going to have those two. So I have a feeling she's going to be in the bottom. She'll probably be in the minority of eviction votes for the first few evictions, but maybe she'll probably be in the majority once she can finally find some allies. But for me, I have a feeling she might be in the bottom. Next up, I want to talk about uh, another BB20 player. We have Tyler Crispin. Tyler, I've played a completely dominant game. If I was a part of the jury in BB20, I would have voted for Tyler to win. It was crazy to me how he didn't win the game. I understand why Casey won. I feel like Casey was a pretty much a competition dominant game, um, but Tyler to me like dominated in all factors, like all the strategy and all that stuff that he did. The most of the moves that happened that season was due to him he was part of a very dominant alliance at level six it's just you know what i mean like it's crazy but that's just what i think um you're gonna have to see what happens uh i have a feeling tyler might be very targeted early or he could be used as a meat shield um so like people can you so that people can have him to be protected since he's gonna be the one of the biggest threats in the house they could use a meat shield the meat shield is sort of a strategy that a lot of people use in survivor so maybe it could be implemented this season in big brother uh meat shields haven't been used a lot in big brother but maybe this is the season where meat shields have been implemented a lot in big brother this season i have a feeling that might be the case since there's so many huge threats entering the season Next up, um, the next person I want to be talking about. So far, we've talked about two girls and one guy. Um, I want to talk about next uh, somebody that I was completely shocked. They're both from the same season. So let's talk about them. Memphis Garrett from BB10. I did not think he was going to be on this cast. Out of all the people from BB10, I thought if he got the call, he would always say no. The fact that he's on this cast is completely shocking to me. He was part of one of the most dominant dynamic duo alliances in Big Brother history to me with the Renegades, with him and Dan. And, you know, they both made it to the end. I do think in a season he was doing a lot of what Dan was telling him to do. And sometimes I felt like he was playing second command to Dan. But there was some points where Memphis did do some moves that greatly benefited him and Dan. Um, even though I do think Dan's winning game is probably the greatest winning game of all time in Big Brother history so far up to this point. Um, you know, it's crazy. You know, um, both of them definitely played impressive games both of them played great games on their season this season though i'm very interested to see how memphis would play in the new school game because the new school game has a bunch of twists they really use the their thing of expect the unexpected because they really throw a lot of things at you every every single week um but I, I'm interested to see what she he would do he does have another bb10 player here and he was aligned with them however you know, he did betray that person. He did backstab them at the Final Four. We're going to be talking about that person very soon. Um, but, you know, Memphis here. Um, I definitely could see him actually being part of a majority alliance. Maybe like a Final Five, Final Six alliance. Um, however, if he is in that alliance, I, I do could see him being the bottom of that alliance, however. So, I am interested to see how it would be. I also could see him... Another scenario could see him being a huge target simply because he is part of a dominant dynamic dual alliance of Big Brother history from a, his first season. But we're just going to have to see. Next, we have Keisha from BB10. Keisha... Yeah. I think out of anybody from BB10 other than Dan... For me, she was 100% positive going to be coming back. I feel like she was another person from BB10 I could have seen possibly coming back for another season. So to me, it makes sense that she's back. Um, for this season, though, um, I don't think a lot of people are going to be targeting Keisha, to be honest. I have a feeling a lot of people actually want her to be an alliance and allegiance for her. Because it's like... She hasn't played since BB10. She got out four, fun of four. You know, if if there's anybody from BB10 that's coming back with just two people, it would definitely be Memphis. But for me, Keisha, I could see her being a part of an alliance. Um, probably actually could be could get a lot of close allies, to be honest, in the house. Um, now, Keisha did have a lot of confrontations in her season. Um, but I have a feeling this season, I have a feeling Keisha would definitely play an under-the-radar game, be a part of an alliance... I could possibly see her getting to the end game. For me, the end game's like final six on. I could see her getting to the end game, but I have a feeling she'll probably go out to like final five, final four if she did. But it would be very interesting to see Keisha play again. Um, 
confrontations in her season were absolutely amazing. And I do agree with most of the points that she was saying during her confrontations because it makes sense what she's talking about. And, you know, it was huge. Um, good to see her coming back. So, yeah. So, yeah. Let's talk about two other people that were from the original All-Stars. We're going to start with, with one of the people that I thought was completely locks coming into the season. Janelle Pierzina. Like... If there's anybody from the original All-Stars that was going to come back, it would be Janelle. And Janelle's going to be the first player in Big Brother history to have played four times. The most out of any BB player. I believe second is Mike Boogie Mallon because uh, he played in BB2, BB7, BB14. Janelle's going to probably play in BB6, BB7, BB14, BB22. She has played in the most seasons for any player in Big Brother history. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how she would play this season. Uh, I definitely could see her winning a lot of competitions like she did in her past seasons. I feel like she played two com competition dominant games in BB6 and BB7. Um, her and Erica's move to get Will evicted at the final four in BB7 All-Stars will be a move that I think greatly benefited them if they managed. And it did greatly benefit them. However, they also need to manage to get out Boogie and Boogie won the final HOH and we knew if one of the Chill Town members were to get to the end, or both of them, one of them is definitely going to win, so it's going to see. Um, but, you know, Janelle coming here, and BB14, she was evicted in the pre due to her having a huge target. And I have a feeling it's going to be, like, the same thing, like BB14. She's going to be targeted immediately, because she's one of the biggest figures in BB history. She's going to be targeted early. She's going to be somebody that people want to get out, or she could also be used like a Michelle, like Tyler. You know, we're going to have to see what's going to happen. But, you know, sh that could happen, too. We're just going to have to see what happens this season, though, because it's definitely a different season than the last, last three times that she's played. So we're going to have to see how she would do. But I have a feeling competitions for her are definitely going to be a competition dominant game for me again. Um, Kaser Rita from Season 6, Season 7, All-Stars. I am so excited Casey's on this cast. I am so excited that so many old schoolers are on this cast. I thought there were, I thought there was going to be like at least four old schoolers like at least coming back. Maybe even three. And the, the people I thought honestly there was going to be those people were Dan, who's not on the cast. Danielle Donato, who we're going to be talking about later, by the way. And Janelle. But literally, there's like more than four, I think. Which is crazy to me. Like... For me, old school Big Brother is probably like, I would honestly say, probably like BB12 and before. Or you could also say old school Big Brother was before BB16. I would say that. I would say before BB16 was old school because the new school game completely changed after BB16. I think the game is completely different now than how it was in the past seasons before BB16. But yeah, Kaser coming back, um, you know, both the times he's played, he was evicted pre-jury um, solely because he made a huge target and while well, he tried as hard as he could to try to recover from getting having that huge target, a lot of people just knew that he was going to be such a huge target in the long run. And we also saw that in BB6 where he got, you know, evicted and then got evicted again after making a huge deal with Jessica who won an HOH there. Um, he made a deal with her in hopes to at least get safety. Then she backstabbed him, got one against the deal, put him up on the block, and then he got evicted for the second time that season. And then in BB7 All-Stars, pretty much chill town. They were wanted to go after Kaser, and as we saw, Kaser got evicted during the pre-jury. He was the last person to get evicted before the jury. This season, I, I think he is going to make the jury phase. This season, I think he will get far. I do see him probably going out the final eight due to probably the same thing as past seasons. Has a huge target. Um, I don't know how it would go, but I do think that's might what happen. Let's talk about the two winners on this cast before we finish off the video. Ian Terry. Ian, yeah, I saw that. I thought he was going to say no, though, to be honest. I thought if there's any winner from past Big Brother, I thought he was going to say no. Um, and I also like how they did, like, post-All-Star winners, so... To me, that's 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 dope that the two winners are there. Um, uh, Ian, 
for me, played a competition dominant game. Uh, if you want to know what I mean by competition dominant games, there's uh, people that won a lot of competitions on the season. I consider a competition dominant game. Um, especially since Ian needed a lot of those competitions to stay within the game. I do think it's a competition dominant game. And also, I do see him getting targeted early along with the other winner due to them being past winners. They're going to get targeted early because of the way how they played the games. Ian's going to be looked at as a competition dominant game. They need to get him out or else, you know, he's going to do what he did last time he played. And then same thing with the other winner. She played a very dominant, she played a very huge game. She was a swing vote at multiple points. She had, she was going to flip back and forth between alliances. So that way her and Corey always got the best thing. We're going to be talking about that soon. But for me, Ian, competition dominant game. Other people I would say competition dominant games are Jackson from last season and Casey from season 20. I would consider Ian in that same pool, competition dominant games, need competitions to get farther and all that stuff. But Ian for me, um, I think he's going to be targeted very early. I could see him going out pretty jury. Now let's talk about the female winner on this cast, Nicole Franzel. Nicole for me, I talked about last video about her situation, being a spy and all that stuff and everything that happened there. And I did read some of the comments for what you guys say. And also, thank you for the support again from uh, yesterday's video. I greatly appreciate it. It was awesome to just respond to you guys and see what you guys think. Um, but for me, Nicole here, I could see her also being targeted and possibly going out pre jury But I do see her making it to the jury phase, however. I think Ian's going to go out early because, like, his season... I feel like the way how he won his season, if he ever comes back for another season, he's going to be targeted right away. For Nicole, she could get try to get at least an alliance for the pre-jury, hopefully. If she doesn't, then she might go out pre-jury as well. It's going to be hard for these winners to, you know, try to get to the top, be part of the majority, because I have a feeling they're going to start off the game in the bottom. But we're just going to have to see what happens there. Um, but Nicole being on this cast is very interesting. Now let's talk about just the other people that are on this cast. Um, Danielle Donato. I, she was going to be a lock of an uh, of an old school player. Um, now, if Dick was on this cast, it would have been interesting because then she would have a huge target on her back. But since it's going to be the first time she's going to be playing with just by herself, I'm interested to see what she would do in terms of her strategy because they always did moves together in BB-8 and BB-13. Well, BB-13, you know, he was expelled. I mean, not expelled. He had to leave the game due to a personal matter. Um, we saw in BB-8 they made moves together, they made an alliance with Jessica and Eric, um, they, then they betrayed those two to get farther in the game, then they got to the final three, final four, evicted Jamika at the final four, evicted Zack at the final three, got to the end together, and Dick won the game. Danielle here, for me, I think she's gonna get far. I could honestly see her also making it to the end game. However, the one thing that I think she has to be very careful about is just making sure that she just goes under the radar and pre jury and then do some moves then and there and probably in the jury phase. At the end game, try to completely dominate that end game and then you and then I th I could see her winning the game. If I was Danielle, I would do that. Um just for the matter of not trying to have a huge target, because that's what happened in BB thirteen, she had a huge target got evicted and you know I mean he you knows crazy we had we saw everything that happened there BBA she made it she made it to the finale as a runner up there um but yeah that's pretty much what happened gonna have to see what happens um this season though but if I was Danielle that would be my strategy entering that season okay is there anybody else yes there is uh there's two more people I think we need to talk about I do, yeah, I think there's two more people we need to talk about. Oh, no, three more people. Sorry, and then that's that'll be it for the video. I know that the video is about to be more than 20 minutes, but I do want to make this video and show my support to you guys. I want to give you guys a huge video here talking about the rumored cast um, and who's in and who's not. Um, but the next person we're, we're going to talk about is David from uh, BB21. Yeah, I think, honestly... If there's anybody that deserves a second chance, it'd definitely be David. The way how he got evicted day one, you know, the the way how 
He was in camp comeback. We saw what he could do in terms of strategy. Like, he knew about the alliance. He knew who was at the bottom. He knew what people were doing in the game. To me, that was so impressive how he managed to do that. Despite being out of the game. And despite not even knowing what was happening in the house. He just knew that through some, some of the stuff. He talked with people. People in the alliance wanted him to be in the alliance. It's like, David, to me, could play a very impressive game of Big Brother. And thank goodness, you know, he might get a second chance. I'm happy that he's going to be on this season to see what he could be able to do. So, yeah, super happy that he's on this cast. Definitely interested to see what he's going to do. Next person that I want to talk about is um, Cody from BB16. Um, to be honest, I thought there was going to be more BB16 returnees. I like at least three or four. There's only two. And, you know, people are going to look at Nicole as... BB-18 game, obviously, BB-16. She, well, she made her into being BB-16. She won in BB-18. Cody played in BB-16. You know, he pretty much was working with Derek. He wasn't a part of the majority alliance that entire game. In terms of moves, though, I do think Derek did most of the moves for the two. Um, I think Cody just, you know, he stuck with people. He stuck tight with those people. Make sure he didn't backstab them. So... I get it, but, you know, it is it is what it is, you know what I mean? It's interesting to see what he would do this season. Um, if Polly was on this cast, which I'm shocked he's not, by the way. If Polly was on this cast, then he, they those two would both be targeted right away. Speaking since they're brothers. But, Cody in this cast is going to be just himself, so... I'm interested to see what he would do this season in terms of just, like... What he's going to do. Who he would align with. You know. And that's the main question I have. Like this is a whole. Whole different cast of Big Brother. That we've ever had. That's what I love about BB All-Stars. Is that like you saw in the first All-Stars. Like it's people that you never thought. Were going to be together. Managed to come together. And be part of this cast. Here we are in BB All-Stars. It's like the same thing. You never know who's going to be with who. It's crazy to me. Cody here, though, um, just going to have to see what he would do. Um, he was in the majority alliance. Derek did most of the moves for the two involving with Derek have winning probably a game that I definitely would put the top three in terms of Big Brother winning games. Um, but yeah, Cody, interested to see what he would do this season. I know he would definitely want to come back and try to do a lot more. Um, what I mean by doing a lot more is like... What I mean is, like, try, like, to do way, 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 like, more to make sure that he won at the end. Because he did, he did let Derek do a lot of the moves for the two, which helped Derek to get to the end and win. So here, Cody, all he has to do is uh, moves that would help him, benefit him, uh, do a lot of moves in the jury phase. Think it would help him out and try not to make a huge target out of yourself while trying to do so. It would be very hard, but we'll see what he would do in terms of his strategy. Next up, the final person that we're going to be talking about here is somebody that 100% I knew was going to be on this cast. 100% lock. Nicole Anthony from BB21. We knew that. She made all the way to the final three. While she was at the bottom a few times, her, that final four alliance between her, Jackson, Holly, and Cliff greatly benefited her game. She got to the final three because of that. However... I feel like if I was her at the final five, I would have taken Tommy a bit farther because Jackson and Holly were going to take each other to the end. And we all knew that she wanted to take Cliff to the end. So taking Tommy would have greatly benefited them in that sort of scenario. But they still stuck with the final four alliance involving Jackson and Holly to get to the final two, evicting Cliff at the final four and evicting Nicole at the final three. Jackson won the game and... It's going to have to see what happened here. I'm very interested to see what Nicole would do this season. Uh, I have a feeling she would be a part of Majority Alliance. I could see her honestly getting to the end. I could see her having like the same situation as Janelle. She comes back from BB6. Gets all the way to the final three again. But gets evicted again at the final three. I could see that with Nicole again. Getting all the way to the end of the game. Finale night. But got evicted at the final three again. One step closer to the, what could be, have been the prize that she would have won. Last person we're going to be talking about is Kevin from Season 11. Yeah, 
I mean, out of anybody from season 11, he, he would have come back. Jeff and Jordan obviously wouldn't have been in consideration. However, Jeff and Jordan do have a lot going on right now and, and all that stuff. So, they wouldn't be able to be on the cast. Same with Rachel. Rachel Riley is probably the craziest person I've ever seen in Big Brother history. But, she's pregnant right now. Um, if you, if you want to know how, uh, go look her up in the media. She is pregnant at the moment. Um, so she won't be on this case. Although I do see her saying yes while being pregnant. Although I do think Brendan would stop her and not do it. So, um, Kevin here. For me, his move that he did with Natalie should be a move that I think should be more of a move that should be more, like, appreciated. His move that he did with Natalie to get Jeffrey and Jordan to flip on Russell just to ensure that Jeff would go out weeks, like a, literally a week after, was one of the greatest moves of all time in Big Brother history. I think that was the top 10 move of all time. Probably even might have been almost, almost a top 5 move of all time. For me, it's definitely a top 10 move of all time. The way how they managed to get Jeff and Jordan on their side, to get, flip on them, to get Russell evicted, and it pretty much got Jeff evicted. And while Jordan still won the game, it is a move that should be greatly appreciated. I think it's a move that benefited Kevin and Natalie. Definitely interested to see what's going to happen here. But, Kevin, yeah, I think he could, I think he's definitely a lock to make it farther in the game, I definitely think he's a lock to get to the final eight on. However, I can see him going out uh, one eviction before the pr uh, for before the end game. As as I stated in this video, for me the end game is final six on. For here, I do think that David would get evicted at the f I, not David Kevin would get evicted at the final seven here, um, due to people seeing how he played in his past season. Probably how he's doing also in this season. I could see him doing some moves then and there. Trying to have a very dominant game so far. Play under the radar a few times. But then make huge dominant moves a few times. Which is something I thought about Kevin's game in season 11 was. He was under the radar in the pre-jury. But to me, he had a very dominant like jury phase. While at the bottom at the first few evictions. Up until he made that move that I think is the top 10 greatest move of all time. He just completely dominated the end game. And he would have won the game if he got to the end at the final two. Regardless of who he was up against. Which at the final three. If it was Jordan or Natalie. He was going to win the game. But again. You know Kevin got evicted at the final three. He was a very dominant figure. I'm very interested to see what he was going to do. What he's going to do this season. Very interesting. But that is it. That is the rumored cast that I've seen. Um, if there's anybody else that I did not uh, say, please let me know in the comment section. Um, I just named everybody that I knew, that I saw. So let me know if there's anybody else. But this is a great video to do. I love how it's almost 30 minutes because this is a type of video that I want to do. A rumored cast reveal for all you guys so we can talk about the cast. This is not the official cast reveal. Um, as I stated before, this is a rumored cast reveal. We don't even know if this is honestly the cast. But, this is a video I wanted to make. Because, hopefully the live interviews will be soon. Cast reveal will be coming out soon as well. And, I'll see you guys uh, making more videos. My player rankings videos as soon as the cast official cast reveal is revealed. And all that stuff. But yeah, I just want to say, guys, thank you so much for the support. Last video, it was such an honor to see the support you guys gave me. Last video, to see how everything's been going on. It's been great just to be with you guys so we could talk about this. So I just want to say thank you. I greatly appreciate it. I greatly appreciate the support. And also, thank you to all to the new subscribers for joining the channel. Hopefully, you guys do enjoy, uh, enjoy these videos that I'm going to be making for the next few weeks, days, and even months. <laughs> And let's enjoy the season together because this is about to be one of the craziest seasons yet. Um, get ready. Grab your popcorn. Grab your soda. Because soon this, the all-star all -star seasons is about to begin.